to the Victoria Falls campground. It does say dry weather road. It's dry at the minute on this side of the hill. It's also nice. Yeah, it's a nice little campground. So this is our free camp at uh, Victoria Falls, just north of Omeo. Heaps of grass, they look after it really well. Fire pits, tables, chairs, 
um, very, very good. And then over here, I've got a toilet block, male and female. That's just down there. And then there's a day center. The uh, toilet block's just here, which is just down from the camping area. And then you've got the day area further down here. So if you want to see the falls, you actually come down past the camping area, down on this track here, across this one lane bridge, and you've got to go, I reckon about four, nearly five k's along that road there. Uh, when you get uh, to a point where there's like a turnaround, just go and stop in the turnaround, and that's where you can just walk down the track and see the falls. Hopefully they'll be flying when you go. down to the falls you can hear the water last time we were here it uh, was dry uh, it definitely sounds like we've got water today it's uh, a decent sized gorge actually ah yes that's spectacular So this is Dinner Plain. It's an Alpine village. It's a village. There's a hut over here. Room's all hut. It's the layout. Oh, it's good. It's We are at Danny's Lookout, and it is a lookout to be seen. Not a fall down there. So we've got Mount Buffalo over there, Little Feather Top through there. Brothers, Milwa. So we're starting with the heavy stuff. 
often tell kids if I pour them wine that um, it's sky wine and they look at me a little bit mortified and look at their mum as if to say I love it. I like the other ground wine, but I guess it came yeah, out of the sky, don't, don't underground and up exactly. through our windmill. <laughs> <laughs> so, with your selection, you've got this page here, which is divided up into sparklings, whites, your rosés, reds, a couple of little desserts, uh, only fortified, they're tawny, and then if you like your sweet ones, the fresh and fruity over here. But we always suggest you start off in the sparkling day. So, so can we leave it up to you just to bring it out? Or what you think we well, should have in the Well, order, it's, it's always it's a very subjective thing. Of yep. course, everybody does it. And some people, oh no, I don't like sparkling because it makes my tummy go funny. So we like to kind of you direct us, but then we can point you okay. along what you know. I mean, do you drink prosecco? A lot of people are if prosecco is a new thing. Mm -hmm. More dry, dry. Yeah, more dry. Yeah. Our uh, proseccos are dry. We have, we have, um, yeah, we have tried. Do you do sparklings or not so much? Yes. Not so much. Piano and Arborino. Have you heard of either of those no. stuff? No. Well, I'll get you those bottles and I'll explain their origins. No. So Piano is a grape varietal that originates from Italy. And this is, we've got it now planted in the King Valley down at Banksdale. And a little bit of the grape also comes from another site up near the Murray Valley. And it's an Italian grape, and it is origins around Naples. So it's a bit of a warmer climate, so that's why we have a mixture of grapes from here and a mixture of some warmer climate grapes. And it makes more of a full body dry wine. This is a 2021, and you'll see what I mean when I pour it. It's just way too crimsony. Oh, yes. I mean, some people might like a really youthful wine, but it would probably be better to keep it at least another year. This one is only sold through the cellar door. Okay. And so this is grapes that were picked back in 2014. If they then were possibly going to go into the Patricia range, but they weren't needed. So we downgrade them into these limited releases through the cellar door. Mm -hmm. And you can see the color next to it. See how it's uh, yes. lovely yeah. aged color. It's nice and soft. So this is a Cabernet that was good grapes to start with and now they've aged and developed beautifully. So that's a very young wine and a nicely and developed older wine. You can, see, it, you can actually yeah. see, see the difference. First, in your first glass is going to be the Tempranillo. Yes. It's a Spanish varietal that we now grow over here. And it's, it's a nice sort of fruit-driven, easy drinking style, not too big a tannin. Then this wine, the Winemaker Series, is a blend of Tempranillo. Oh, okay. And then it's also got 25% Graciano, which is another Spanish grape. And together these these two grapes make it a, a style which they call in Spain Rioja. So this is a Rioja red style. And the 25% Graciano adds just a bit more spice and backbone to the wine. So this one's Ooh. quite soft and this is a little bit more body to it. Jerif is a grape that originally comes from the Rhone Valley, the same area where um, Shiraz comes from. Most Jerif now grows in Australia and it grows predominantly in the northeast around Rutherglen. So they've become so this region becomes famous for its big full bodied reds, yep. these yep. It we make one that's a little bit more elegant. Some of the so when I say elegant the wine is only about fourteen point five in alcohol, where some of the ones at Rutherglen got to about sixteen. But it's a big, full bodied, rich fruit, softer finish and something that you could age for a good ten years. So oh, it, well. it is our biggest seller here is a one-off release at the cellar door. It was a wine that was going to be our premium dessert wine that goes with our Patricias, but we had to um, sell it only at the cellar door because it's got these little harmonies. Oh, I'm going to show you the little wine diamonds. Oh, Can you see those little yes, wine diamonds? Look at those. So that's wow. there. Oh, so it has a label. Yeah, and so this label, it, it just oh. says for cellar door sales sample week, so we can't sell it out in the store oh, because wow. People would see those little wine diamonds and be a bit so what's unsure. So what's a wine diamond? So a wine sugar? diamond. So it's it's harmless, completely harmless, and it's basically it's crystallized. It's tartaric acid. Now tartaric acid is the acid of wine, and it's a byproduct. So to get rid of it when you're bottling up, you actually chill the wine down, and that that solidifies and it sinks to the bottom of the big tanks, and they pump it out above it and bottle the wine. 
And usually, you know, 99% of the time, that's enough and it's gone. But yep. every now and then it, it reappears after the wine bottles and basically makes it well, more or less worthless for shops. But if we can hand sell it here and explain to people, yep. and they taste it, then it sells extremely well. So I'll show you what it's like. Yeah, well, yeah. So that sells for $20 a bottle. But the first one is a blend of the orange musket and flora that we've been doing for many, many years. It's a delightful little dessert wine. And when we have people coming in from England, they sell it over in the UK still, and they come to us and say, oh, have you got some of that pudding wine? You love your pudding wine. And this is what they call their pudding wine. <laughs> so that's the orange musket and flora, and then this is this special little one that's not on the sheet. This is old Mr. Brown. Yes. And old Mr. Brown is the son of the founder. So this photo was taken just at the very end of his life, back in about 2000, yep. and he died in 2004, aged 89. Mm. He just lived for grapes and making wine, not for making a fortune, but he just yep. loved tasting uh, you get a sheet like this each that you can actually put uh, notes down onto and give them we actually used a double or triple or single tick uh, for the wines that we uh, did each and it's a private tasting and um, was very very uh, informative interesting and made for a fantastic afternoon well done guys Jenny, Jenny actually looked after us today. She actually had three glasses. We only had yeah. one each. But, uh, <laughs> I good, sculled good, mine. Good, good job. Well done. <laughs> so we're at the uh, Brown Brothers uh, Free Camp, just opposite the um, Brown Brothers itself. And we're near a little airport or a runway. There's only one plane, so I don't think they're going to annoy us all night. But um, yeah, really enjoyed the uh, tasting. Uh, staff are really good. You can see here, there's a lot of space for, for RVs. Um, we've actually picked an area closer to this end, so we're away from the road. Um, yeah, a good overnight stop. This fly thing actually really works. There's no flies on our tea. So we're uh, just coming back into Bendigo after our Alpine Loop and there's the Bendigo sign, so here we are now. Well, it's very different to where we were. I feel like we're up in the 
Now we met. Back up that. Where are we? Well, we're on our way home now. We. Where did we come from? 